We are evaluating by finding the opposites of some of these numbers. So here I see negative 10. The opposite of negative 10 would be positive 10. And the opposite of positive 10 gets me back to negative 10. This one has negative 8. What is the opposite of negative 8? Write that in the blank. Around 200 BCE, Chinese merchants bought and sold animals. The merchants subtracted the money they spent buying animals from the money they received selling the animals. They called the amount of money that was left over a surplus. Around 620 BCE, merchants in India called the amount of leftover money a fortune. The merchants kept a record of the fortunes after buying and selling animals. So here we have the cow, the sheep, and the pig. So the cow, they sell for 200 coins, and the sheep, they purchased for 100 coins, leaving them with 100 in surplus, or 100 coins that they would consider fortune. Here the pig was 200, I'm sorry, the cow was 200 and the pig was 50. So 200 is what they earn from selling the cow, and 50 is how much they pay for buying the pig, which leaves them with 150. Here we had the cow for 200 and the pig for 50, giving us 250. Then they buy it, the sheep for 100. 250 minus 100 is 150. The cow is 200, the sheep is 100, so they sell 300 coins worth. And these two pigs are worth 50 each, so they bought 100 worth. 300 minus 100 is 200. We have 100 for each sheep, giving us 200 and 50 for the pig, and the cow is worth 200. 250 minus 200 is 50. This is 100 and 100. This is 50, 50, 50, and 50, which is also 200. So they didn't have any fortune left over. In this scenario, the merchant sells a cow and a pig and wants to buy three sheep. Does he have enough money to pay for the sheep? Well, the cow is 200 and the pig is 50. And each of these sheep is worth 100. Does he have enough? No, he would go in debt $50. And today we use this negative symbol to represent debt or a number below zero. But they ran into a dilemma of trying to figure out how to represent positive and negative values. So they used two different colors, the red and the black, to represent one being a fortune and one being debt. And so you have a couple of different styles of ways of indicating numbers. You can think of this like tallies. One, two, three, four, five. And then once they get to six, they went five, and one more would be six. Five and two more would be seven. So this is just a different style of representing numbers but they use the positive and negative as two different colors rather than writing a symbol out front of their number like we do. Instead of just debt and fortune, we have other real world contexts for opposites. We have north is the opposite of south. We have west is the opposite of east. 
One of these, if we were to look at a horizontal number line, would represent negatives. So the west represents negative, and the east represents positive. If we were to look at that vertical number line, north would represent a positive value, and south would represent the negative values. So I'm going to redraw that little direction thing as a reference for us. So north, east, south, west, and it says, the point on the number line represents the locations of Paris, France, Vienna, Austria, and in relation to Munich, Germany. So we have three different locations. Vienna, Austria is 402 kilometers east. So it is east of Germany. We have to go to the east. Which statements are true? Choose all that apply. Munich is 402.3 kilometers east of Vienna. Well, if we went east from Vienna, we would still be traveling this way. Is Munich east of Vienna? No. B, the point that represents the location of Paris is between negative 841 and 840. Well, 841.7 Below that would be 841, and then this point 7 should be 842 would be the next number in the sequence. So is it between negative 841 and negative 840, or negative 842 and 841? Should be C. Paris is located 841.7 kilometers west of Munich. So here's Munich. If I move to the west, 841.7, do I get to Paris? Yes. And then E, Paris is closer to Munich than Vienna is. If we look at where Munich is, is this distance to Vienna or this distance to France? Which one of those is closer? Vienna is closer to Germany. So E says Paris is closer to Munich, Germany, and that is false. For parts A through D, consider the descriptions of the locations of five places. The bank is located a half block north of the library. The park is located three blocks south of the library. The location of the post office is the opposite of the location of the park and the school is located halfway between the library and the park. A asks us to plot and label a point at zero on the number line to represent the location of the library. So we're going to start there. This represents the library. B, plot and label points on the number line to represent the locations of the bank, the park, the post office, and the school. Well, before I do that, I have to decide what to count by. What interval length should be used to show all the locations in this situation? Well, I have a half, I have three, I have halfway, so I'm going to count by one half. This should be one half, one, three halves, two, five halves, three. Then down here I have negative one half, negative one, negative three halves, negative two, negative five halves, negative three. So we're going to plot the point for. The bank. The bank is a half a block north, meaning positive. So I'm going to put a little B here to represent the bank. Then I need to plot the location of the park. The park is three blocks south of the library. So south is below. This is the park. Now we need the post office. 
it says the post office is the opposite of the park. So if the park is negative 3, the post office should be positive 3. We use PO for post office. And then it says the school is located halfway between the library and the park. So here's the library and the park. That was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 below it. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, putting us at 3 halves. And that is the location of the school. D asks, what number on the number line represents the location of the school? That was negative 3 halves. And explain your reasoning. Well, what is half of negative 3? Well, half of negative 3 would be negative 3 split into two parts which is negative 3 over 2. Or you can think of it as negative 1.5, but we used fractions instead of decimals. This is an activity that would be done in class. You would get a card that indicates either a positive value or a negative value. And you would work to find who in the class has the opposite of your card. And then create the number line accordingly and plot your points on there. We're going to skip this for the sake of the digital or the online video lesson. And then just make sure that your workbook and your warm-ups are filled in and complete. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.